Hey everyone, today I want to cover a few of the ways that you can fix your puck defects. Now you might have caught our video recently where I went through some of the puck defects that you can experience. Things like a floating puck, channeling around the outside of your coffee puck, wormholes, and we identified um, what those issues are by looking at the coffee puck. Well, what I want to cover today is some of the cool new tools that are available to help minimize these issues. And we'll take them through one by one and show you how they can improve your espresso game. So the first one we're gonna start with is what kind of size basket um, do you have in your group handle and how much coffee does it need? Well, to look at measuring that, the first thing you're gonna need is a set of scales and a dosing pot. And we're gonna dose out a little bit of coffee now And we've got our 21 gram basket, or commonly known as a triple straight wall basket. We know that the recipe for this is 22 and a half grams of coffee. Now, if you've got something that may be a seven um, gram style basket or a 14 gram basket, um, the best way to start to understand how much coffee you're gonna need in here uh, is to fill that up to the very top, get it nice and flat, tamp that coffee, test your extraction, and then if you've got that grind and it's running through properly, go repeat that process. And before you go and extract your coffee, you need to weigh how much grind is in there, and that's what you should use to start to repeat. Now, by having the right amount of coffee in a basket, it's gonna help the biggest issue that we talked about, about a floating puck. Because if there is no restriction or um, pressure being applied to that waterbed as it comes in and expands the coffee, it just lets that water go straight through. It just loses its, um, I guess, rigidity and it just starts to float around and lift that coffee puck right up and the water goes straight through. So that's one part that's going to help a floating puck. Okay. So now you've got the right amount of coffee that's going to fit in your basket. A dosing pot is super handy, allowing you to transfer that coffee into your group a handle and your basket. And by giving it a bit of a spin, the coffee is going to get a bit of a, a Gravitron you know, effect, like that carnival ride you grew up with, uh, throwing that coffee around the outside of the basket. And just a little bit of a tap there will hopefully get that grind to come right around the outside edge of the basket. So, that's the other one we talked about, water going around the outside edge of the basket because it's, it's got the least path of resistance. And people were tapping perhaps the side of the basket and we didn't want that to happen because you're going to create a crack where that water is going to go down. So the best thing we can do now is add a um, dosing funnel and using a WDT tool because we've now got that coffee around the outside of the basket but the actual grind consistency does need some help. We're going to have some boulders, some fines, and super fines uh, in there, which is basically um, different points of resistance uh, as the water flows through that we want to cut up and, and eliminate that to get the water to go through evenly. So using a WDT tool, getting in here, doing some low WDT, and as you make your way all the way around, we'll come into the middle, and you can see a few of those clumps starting to disappear. And then when we get to the top, we've got our top surface WDT and getting rid of any of those boulders that you can see is certainly going to make sure that water will flow through nice and easy. And by getting that consistent, we're going to get rid of the wormholes, which is a straight channel going straight through your coffee puck. So if you look at it afterwards and you see this drill hole, you've basically got a big air pocket there that you haven't been able to break up and fill with coffee grinds. So we just had to pause to make a coffee and I've just used the ZM here at the back and have a look at the boulder that's come out of there. So it's a beautiful, um, uh, you know, great grinder, but it still does have that clumping. So perfect for a WDT. So I will get that into our basket. I've got to heat that handle up and we're going to make a brew with that one. So the problem with getting that tamper and using it is it may not be the exact size for the basket. A lot of these tampers are 58 mil, where the basket can handle a 58.3 or 0.4 mil. So that leaves a bit of a, a ring around the outside of the basket that isn't being tamped. So how do you fix that? Well, you can you know, use this for a little bit of time, and then you can upgrade. And one of those upgrades would be looking at something like a Pullman tamper. Now, these are customized tampers that allow you to not only increase the height of 
the actual shaft here. So if you've got a big hand, you can you know, fix that up for you. You've also got a rubber um, point here. If you're using these tampers all day, every day, you're pushing on a bit of a softer surface. That's nice as well. But you can remove and change the heads. So over your you know, life of baristering, you might have had a different machine. You might have started with something like a, a Sunbeam or Breville, which is a 54 mil. You can get yourself a 54 mil head. Then you upgrade to maybe a Lumazocco, which might be a 58. And if you want to get really precise, you'd start to look at something like the Pullman Big Tamp, or the Big Step Tamp here. Now, it's a little bit different because when they started to bring tampers out that were 58.3 or 4, being very precise for a coffee basket, is the whole side of this um, tamper was the measurement, the 58.3 or 4. And you'd find that that would actually start to bind as it entered into the coffee basket, which I don't have. So it would start to bind as it went in and, and you really couldn't move that um, very well. So what the big step has done has given you about two mil um, width of that precise measurement to fit inside, but then they've cut it back and that allows you to have that movement to be able to tamp better and not let it bind inside your basket. And with the Pullman, it's as simple as pulling it apart and screwing it together. Here we go. And we can now have that precise tamping on our coffee bed, fixing the, um, the coffee into the outside edges of the basket. So by tamping in the outside of that basket, we're gonna stop the path of least resistance happening and that water flowing down the outside edge of the basket. So I'm starting to get a bit of a collection here of goodies. Uh, and look, like any little hobby, you may get yourself more and more uh, things as you get better at your trade. So one of the things that we always love to have is a lovely tamp mat, uh, and we've got a distributing tool. These are the NCDs, um, and essentially that takes the coffee from one part, and like a, a leveler or a grader that you might see, or a screed in, um, uh, you know, when you're doing concreting or on the roads, just scraping the coffee from one point and moving it to another. So we can utilize one of these um, NCD tools first, by placing it in, they have a specific depth gauge that you would um, adjust depending on the basket you're using and the amount of coffee. But simply popping that in, it's not fully tamping, it is just distributing that coffee when you turn it. So you can see that that has moved the coffee around, it's given us a flat surface, but there is still a sponginess there allowing us to tamp that coffee grind. By getting our big step from Pullman, we can pop this in We've got our fingers sitting over the top, allowing us to make sure we're nice and flat and level, and then we can push down and get that really nice tamp around the outside edge of the basket. So one thing you might notice there for those keen eyes is it does have the indented ridge here for the spring, so it's not a full straight basket. And you can see on the edge of the, uh, the big step here, it's actually collected some of those grinds and brought them to the top. So I might just put a VST straight wall basket in and show you that again. So if you don't know what a VST basket is, we've done videos on these before, but it is a precision made high quality uh, espresso basket that you might look to add into your coffee kit. They're pretty easy to change your baskets. If you're not sure, popping upside down there allows you to take the other one out and we'll pop that in. This is the triple um, basket and the 21 um, gram and you can see that there is no ridge there for that spring to hold it in place So definitely allows us to tamp straight all the way through. So I'll just repeat that process that we did before Getting our coffee grind in pop on our WDT Pop on our flare funnel and use our WDT I should say Getting rid of all of those clumps We're going to use the NCD to distribute that as well. And now we're ready to tamp. There you go. And you can see how clean that is around the outside edge. The coffee ground is packed all the way right into the corners, nice and tight. There's a slight little bit of, of very fines on the side there, but that is a very good tamp right in the corner of the baskets. Ready for the next thing we're gonna to use to help 
the, uh, the coffee puck extract a lot better. So when we look at what we've done so far, we've looked at fixing the uh, channeling around the outside of a basket, any of those worm holes that would be going straight through the middle of the coffee basket. And we've also um, looked at how much coffee should be in the coffee basket so that it won't uh, lift and float up. Well, the other thing we want to look at, which is going to help all of these things combined is a um, Flare 58 puck screen. Now there are a couple of different um, brands out there. We're using the flares, we do enjoy them. And what this does is sits on top of your coffee puck and it will help that coffee puck from lifting right up. It's gonna allow the coffee to expand as well, but there won't be this mass of head pressure that um, is gonna allow that water to come in and just basically float around. So it will keep the puck a little bit more stiff uh, and stop the water from finding one of those little holes and shooting down it constantly. So it'll cut up the water drops and evenly spread it over the coffee bed. So you simply place those on top of the coffee puck, like so, and you're ready to extract your espresso. We're gonna lock that in and start our extraction. And as we said in the other videos, it's looking at what happens after um, extraction for puck defects to check for channeling, check for floating pucks, check for water sitting on top of those pucks as well. Um, so we can identify which issue we need to go and target. So we'll let this shot run all the way through for a full normal, which is a two to one recipe. We've got the 22 and a half grams of coffee in there. We're gonna get our 45 grams yield in around that 32 seconds. And there we go. Smidge over, 34 seconds, a little bit more extraction there, which means that everything we've done has increased the time of our extraction. The water was flowing very even through that whole puck. So that's our extraction there. And when you're using these puck screens, um, the tip is just to turn them upside down, give them a little tap, and then that will reveal your coffee puck. Now you can see there is no channeling, there is no holes, we have a very even water flow through that whole puck. There is a slight little bit of um, uh, sponginess to that puck, allowing it for a little bit of expansion. So we've basically been able to fix all of those issues that we talked about in the previous videos around puck defects. I hope that showing you all these little techniques has helped you take your espresso game to the next level. There are so many things that can be an issue inside your coffee puck that being aware and knowing what you can use or certain tools you could um, buy to help you improve those will definitely get that flavor in the cup far better. You can see here, you can start with very easy uh, WDT, so reducing channeling by getting consistent, consistent flow of water through the coffee grind. Then we've got a basket that allows us to actually have the water flow evenly all the way through and get us a great tamp uh, by pushing all the coffee right out to the edge of that coffee basket. Then you've got something like your NCD that allows you to distribute that nice and evenly from the top to get a very nice flat level uh, surface before you provide your tamp pressure. And then again, having a tamper that will actually fit your coffee basket so that the water doesn't go around the outside edge and create channeling, uh, which is the least path of resistance for that water to go through. And then we're finishing it off after we tamp with a puck screen. So that will allow that coffee puck to get a nice even spread of water on top of it and stop it from floating and rising up. It will still allow a, bit, a little bit of expansion to your puck, but it won't make it go crazy and get that fast flow water that happens at the end of your coffee shop. So all of these accessories are available on our website. Feel free to jump on and pick up one of these for yourself. Um, some of these start from around 25 bucks for your WDT and up to a couple of hundred dollars when you start to customize a beautiful Pullman tamper. Anyway, thanks very much for watching guys. If you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. We really do appreciate your support. Uh, I'm Luke, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time. Cheers. I did it again. For those of you that are still watching, thanks very much. We do appreciate your, your support. But the least path of resistance, I can't believe it. For years, I've always said the path of least resistance. But I don't know, I've got it in my head saying it around the other way. Anyway, 
I tried to correct myself so many times in this video. I, I hope you picked up the times I did or didn't get it right. Anyway, thanks everyone. Really appreciate your support and uh, we hope that you do get heaps out of this video. And if you've got any questions, please pop them down below. I do love answering those questions. I do try and answer them myself personally. Uh, if not, the team definitely does a great job answering. So, hey, if you've got one for me specifically, pop it in there or Jimmy as well and I'll make sure that he gives you a personal response. All right, thanks guys. We'll catch you next time. Cheers.